All right, let's get some analysis on this and bring in Global Health Advisor Oksana Pizik. She joins me now from London. Oksana, always a pleasure having you on, on the show. Um, my question to you is, what have we learned from the Delta-related restrictions and how does it apply to uh, the new restrictions that we're seeing now that are being imposed? Well, we're seeing still high levels of Delta topped up with uh, even faster spread of Omicron. Uh, Omicron's spreading faster than any other variant that we've seen before. But uh, it's important to, to also highlight that we, we have other variants co-circulating at this point as well. So that's putting a lot of pressure on, on the healthcare system. Uh, what Delta really highlighted is that uh, there are certain interventions such as continued face mask wearing, um, allowing improved ventilation, uh, all coordinated together can help to reduce spread. But now because uh, Omicron is so much more transmissible, uh, the chances of reinfection are three to four times higher uh, than for any other variant that we have seen. So we need to take even further steps um, to stop healthcare systems from being overwhelmed uh, during this time. Um, I want to ask you about vaccines in just a bit, but uh, when the Omicron variant was first detected, um, travel bans were, were criticized. Remember what happened to, to South Africa. But with now more and more countries uh, imposing tighter travel restrictions, um, why is there such a, a sudden change? Well, the virus moves uh, where people move, and that uh, travel ban is only really effective uh, dramatically before it's seeded uh, heavily elsewhere. And, and, and now we see that there is uh, community transmission at very high levels. It's become the dominant strain um, in, in so many countries that uh, even now with the further uh, travel restrictions, per that's perhaps to also uh, all remind people to limit their overall movements, but it's not actually going to be necessarily that effective because it's going to continue to spread locally unless there are local measures that match those international travel restrictions. Um, I remember BioNTech, uh, which has partnered obviously with, with Pfizer uh, with one of these mRNA vaccines, saying that they could actually come up with a tweaked version of uh, a vaccine in about 90 days. So that puts us into, in, 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 into March. But with sort of like the, the, the global booster campaign picking up speed, we've heard Dr. Anthony Fauci saying, go out and get your booster shot. Are we gonna be needing a fourth shot after a booster shot with this tweaked one? Yes, well, currently the uh, booster program, right? That's gonna be linear progression. You can only boost at a certain rate, you can only get so many people in at one spot, and you only have so many vaccinators to deal with. So with a doubling rate of two days, uh, the exponential growth of Omicron is gonna you know, boosters are just not going to be enough to cope with this. Uh, that's one thing. Now, whether we'll need a tweaked version uh, in the future, that's very likely. Uh, although they're saying that with the uh, boosters now, you have 80% protection against hospitalization, which is really important because we saw after two doses, especially with Pfizer, your, the protection against mild disease was cut in half. But that booster really does work in preventing hospitalizations. It's timing that's going to be the tricky part um, in coming weeks, especially here in the UK, based on current growth. Uh, but it is likely that in future we'll see, uh, particularly there are new and new variants that emerge that will have a seasonal tweaked vaccine, potentially multivalent, uh, just like the flu vaccine is, if there continue to be, um, if Omicron and Delta continue to co-circulate together, then we could have a multivalent vaccine that addresses both of them, like we have for others. So I think we should expect to see that uh, there'll be new generations of vaccines potentially every year, uh, which is not too dissimilar from flu. If more and more people are getting vaccinated, especially with this booster campaign being really pushed right now, and if this uh, Omicron variant is more transmissible and less deadly or less severe, um, isn't this perhaps an alternative way uh, to herd immunity? Well, I think we are approaching a scenario where uh, either, ev either everyone will become vaccinated, recovered, or, or have uh, sadly passed. So we are uh, accelerating towards that uh, place uh, based on current levels of growth. Uh, certainly I would also highlight, however, that uh, 
there is a need, especially now, to look, at least in the UK, about what we can do to ring fence uh, the health service, because one in 10 NHS workers are currently predicted to be off sick with COVID because it's spreading so rapidly. Um, so in the long run, we'll have uh, really built up the people who didn't get infected with the previous waves are now um, becoming much more susceptible because they don't have hybrid immunity. Uh, but that paired with the boosters and with the advent of antivirals, again, there's not enough supply to deal with like this Christmas crisis. But if we look to the future, we're gonna have more tools available to us. This could potentially be the last harsh winter of tough decisions. Okay, Oksana Fizik, live for us from uh, London. Pleasure having you on and I do appreciate your analysis.